us that we are warriors of Christ. Sometimes we don't think in a military sense, that if we're called to think in a military sense, when we were baptized and we were sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the prayer of the church was that you are a newly enlisted warrior of Christ, a soldier of Christ. That we were armed by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That we were given the sword of faith. We were given what was needed for us to contend with the enemy. Is there an enemy? Of course there's an enemy. That the enemy from time immemorial is Satan, Lucifer, the devils, the demons. But there's this cosmic war between God and the fallen angels. When the fallen angels rebelled against God, they received their own kingdom of Hades, hell. And throughout human history, there is this continual warfare that takes place. You see that in the Garden of Eden at the very beginning, that Adam and Eve are there. And the devil in the form of a serpent comes and tricks Eve, and Eve tricks Adam, and begins the exile of us human beings from paradise. And the whole history of creation, the whole history of humanity, is the cosmic battle between good and evil, between light and darkness. Apostle Paul, in his writing today, is reminding us that we were called to be warriors, soldiers of Christ, that there is an enemy. He says the enemy is not flesh and blood. It's not human beings. But he says it's the spiritual forces from on high, the principalities, the powers, the authorities that are on high, that this is the enemy, that this, it is this enemy that will destroy you. Now, when we think of it theologically, we say that the devil was already defeated by Christ, by the sword of the cross. That when Christ died on the cross, he defeated death, devil, <clears throat> and sin. If the devil is defeated, then why is the devil bothering us? Well, the devil was defeated in this sense. That Christ gave the devil, Satan, a mortal blow. That he's mortal now. That he is weakened, he is dying. When Christ comes in his glory, it will be the final banishment of the demons and their kingdom forever. But now a person, or a demon in this case, that is wounded, still has some life in them. And although they are dying, then they still could do a lot of damage. And the last thing that the demons want to do is to inflict damage upon God himself, which they can't do, so they do it upon God's creation as human beings who are made in the image and likeness of God. So there's a continual warfare that takes place. There are a multitude of demons and devils that go about all the time doing things. Oftentimes we don't think of the devil. When we do think of it, we think of it in a kind of childlike way. We think of a little angel on one shoulder telling us to do good things, and a little red devil on the other shoulder telling us to do bad things. And so it becomes a kind of fantasy for us. It becomes a kind of imagery that really doesn't make sense. It's kind of a metaphor for what is good and evil. But the whole tradition of the church and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ is that the devils, the fallen angels, are real creatures. And they do great damage. And that they're continually doing warfare. So they don't see. That they're much more intelligent than as human beings are because they're of the angelic nature. And so their whole intent is upon destroying human beings. Destroying human beings. And so Paul is reminding us of that, that there's this continual warfare. He says, be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The power of his might is the Holy Spirit. So we're strong in the Lord and we have the power of the strength of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit. The soldier, if they don't have strength, they can have all the equipment, they can have the right uh, 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 clothing. But if they're not strong, if they don't have their, their wits about them, if they don't have muscle, if they, they, they're not strong, it doesn't matter. They won't have the strength to do what they need to do. Paul says, put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, all the pieces that a soldier would need. And he's going to give us this imagery of, of, of the Roman soldier, which is on the back of the door of the church. It's been there for years and years. When you leave, you can look at that, and it all explains it right there. Put on the whole armor of God, against the devil. Take up the whole armor of God each day in the evil day. 
the day of hell. He says that the times we live in is that it's the age of darkness. Well, we know that. Just look around in the world. We know it's the, the age of darkness. And that there's much evil there. And then he goes any more particular. He says, put on your waist the belt of truth. The belt of truth. You gird the loins, as it says in the old tradition. What does that mean? Well, in the old days, people wore long robes, of course. And to run and to get somewhere fast, they would pick up the garment and they would buckle it under the cincture. The, the, the belt, the waist, so that they could run without tripping themselves. And on the belt, the cincture was an ensign, just like here we see the cross. And so it's this insignia, this insignia which binds us, that regards us, that we're prepared to go forward, to do battle. So the cincture is important because it puts the clothing in good order so that we could run and do what we need to do. It says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is what protects what? The heart. It protects the heart. And so the breastplate protects the righteousness that we have. What's in our heart. Which is holiness. He says, equip your feet with the gospel of peace. Well, the soldiers, they're not going to go anywhere unless they are shod with good shoes, that they do lots of marching, that they're, they're doing the maneuvers, that they're out, that their feet has to be protected, that they have to be ready, and that their footwear has to be good. For us, the good news of the gospel is a beautiful feat, that is the message of peace that we bring, that we go forth, we bring forth the message of peace. Christ himself, who is peace. What does a soldier want? A soldier doesn't want war. A soldier wants peace. He doesn't want to fight. There's no glory in the fight. There's glory in victory, and there's even greater glory in peace. And so a soldier absolutely desires peace more than anything else. But with the feet shod, with the good news of the gospel of Christ, then we're secure and we're able to go forth. And then he says, with all these things, well, with, with the, the breastplate and, and, and the belt and the footwear, he says, with all these things, add, add the shield of faith. The shield of faith. The Roman soldier, they had a shield, and it wasn't a little, a little shield, it was a red shield that covered the whole body from foot to head. It was a big, big shield. So they were protected. They were protected from what? Well, Paul says, the fiery darts of the wicked one. The temptations of the wicked ones that comes to us. The devil is always giving us temptations. The devil is always trying to trick us. The main strategy of the devil is for him to convince us that he really doesn't exist, that he's not interested in us. So that we would ignore him, we wouldn't pay attention to him. That we would think that evil, darkness, that these are kind of natural conditions. That this is how God kind of made us, so it, as it were. So that we would abide in that darkness and think it is natural for us. The devil doesn't really want to make manifest his most iniquitous and dark and evil and sinful things. Rather, he tries to trick us with things that are glimmering and light. He comes, as the Apostle Paul says elsewhere, as an angel of light. In other words, he coats what is bad with the painting of what is good, what is luminous, what is delightful, so that we could trick us. Just like the apple in the garden. He saw the apple, it looked so beautiful, she tasted it, and as the Father said, it was a very bitter apple. That it looked good, but it tasted awful. It's the same thing with us, that the devil gives us the temptations. And he gives the temptations saying to us that it's good. Try it. You like it. If you don't like it, and it's something bad, you can always confess it. Or if you only do it in your mind, it's okay. And if you don't do it with your body, it's okay. Or do it now. Or don't do it now. You can do it later. There's all kinds of trickery 
and maneuvers that the demons have for us, because the demons know us very well. They can't read our minds, they can't read our hearts, but they know our habits. That they don't give up on us, they don't sleep, that they're active all the time. And the demons are happy to confuse us, to make us <coughs> depressed, to make us sad, to make us trip up spiritually. They do all kinds of things for us, saying what is good, but it is really bad, giving us the idea that we have time, that it doesn't really matter, or they say that well, everybody else says it, so you know it can't be so bad, or it's only a little sin, it doesn't matter, it's only a little sin, or I do it in secret, it doesn't matter, no one will see, no one sees it if it's done in secret. And so there's all these kind of things that we experience, the temptations. The temptations that come from the demons, the devils. That they knock on our door, we don't even know it's the devil. We just think it's an ordinary thought. And if it's not the dark things that the devil inspires us to do, then he weakens us in other ways. He tries to neutralize us. Like when we neutralize a soldier. Well, instead of fighting a soldier, there are other ways to neutralize a soldier. You can say, hey buddy, come, let's have a drink together. And then you get drunk. Or you say, why don't we do this and spend our time here? So it doesn't have to be the battle itself that we're neutralized and we forget that this is the enemy that is trying to deceive us and corrupt us and cause us like, all kinds of great problems. And he does it by all kinds of means, all kinds of trickery. It's guerrilla warfare. It's not that he identifies himself as the enemy outright. No. He does it through trickery and container. And that's why we have to be mindful. Also, Paul's friend, St. Peter, he says to us, be sober and be watchful. Pay attention to yourself. He says, because the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Well, the lion does the same thing. That the lion waits for its prey. Then it hides. And then it springs. It's the same thing that is done for us. And so both St. Peter and Paul are warning us to be careful of the, the, the de devil and the works of the devil. He says, put on the helmet of salvation. Well, the head needs to be protected. And how do we protect the head? The helmet of salvation. Well, we do it by prayer. We do it by attentiveness. By keeping our mind alert at, as it were. So that we don't become depressed or discouraged or disconnected from the reality of things. And then finally he says, have in your hand the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the Spirit, he says, is the Word of God. When we think of the Word of God, we usually think of Scripture. But in this context, Paul isn't talking about the Scripture. He's saying that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, Jesus Christ himself. The person, the Word of God. And so we have in the epistle today this imagery of the soldier. And we're all soldiers. We need to be mindful that this isn't the church a passenger ship. That it's not a cruise ship, it's a military ship. That Christ is the admiral, Christ is the general. And that we are being prepared for warfare, and spiritual warfare, we have to be attentive to that. If we're not attentive to that, if we think it really doesn't matter, then we will be neutralized. We will be neutralized. The demons will say to us, well, it really doesn't matter if you have that helmet on. It's hot, take it off. Or put your shield aside, you really don't need that. But what does Paul say in the epistle that twice he says? He says, put on the whole armor. And a few verses later, he says the same thing. Be sure you put on the whole armor that protects the soldier. So we can't leave any part out. We need a shield of faith. We need the sword that strikes the enemy who is Jesus Christ. We need the helmet of salvation. We need the, the footwear, which is the gospel of Christ. We need the belt, which is the belt of, of, of righteousness. And all these things are necessary for us. Because every day, we confront, a, we confront a cosmic warfare with the demons. It doesn't seem possible, but it is a reality that takes place. And so let us understand that when we were baptized, that we say we reject Satan, all his works, all his service, and all his pride. And the Holy Mother of the Church said, are you sure? Repeat it again. And so we said it a second time, and we said it a third time, to make sure we understood 
that we have nothing to do with the spiritual forces of wickedness, the demons, that we are sealed warriors of the God man Jesus Christ, and that our life is in Christ. Let us always be attentive as soldiers are attentive to the warfare that takes place. That warfare takes place every day. It takes place on the outside. It takes place within us. It takes place against the demons. And we have to be aware of that. And spiritually, we have to be equipped and prepared and alert as soldiers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>